On Monday, Governor Gavin Newsom signed Assembly Bill 392. You might recall it defines when police can use deadly force. Some have said that it's created one of the toughest standards in the nation for whenever law enforcement can kill an individual. Now, the language of the bill mandates that law enforcement use deadly force only when necessary. Under current law, deadly force can be used when reasonable. Now, the law also prevents officers from firing at felons that are running away and don't pose immediate danger. With me now is that bill's co-author, Assemblymember Dr. Shirley Weber of District 79. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. It's always good to be here. Definitely. It's good to have you. Uh, so I, this is a big week for you, but I, I want to point out this this uh, Stefan Clark's brother he was quoted in the LA Times earlier to the, uh, earlier this week uh, saying essentially that this bill is watered down. Everyone knows that, but at least we're getting something done. At least we're having the conversation now. This was known <laughs> as a Stefan Clark law, um, and 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 it was kind of rooted in in that particular incident. But but I'm, I'm curious from the co-author, and you've yeah. seen the many iterations of this. Are you are you happy with with how this bill shook shook down? We're happy with the bill, and I wouldn't quote Stefan Clark's brother. That's number one. But number two, it's not a Stefan Clark bill. This bill came out of a lot of things that took place from a coalition of individuals who, uh, who had lost their sons and daughters and family members over a number of years. So this is not necessarily a Stefan Clark issue because there were things happening before Stefan Clark and things that happened afterwards that continued to shape and mold this bill. This bill set out to do certain things. And like any bill, you may put in other things that are there that people may want, but it set out to do certain very specific things, and it did those things. So it really isn't watered down. It changed California law, but it also changed the nation in terms of its perception of when we use deadly force. Uh, the bill set out to change uh, a, a law that says you can use it when it's reasonable, and, it, and we change it to when it's necessary. We also changed 147 years a, a law that talked about a fleeing felon, mm -hmm. where you could shoot of anybody who you thought had been had committed a felony, which it could be stealing a piece of bread. I mean, you know, so as a result, we changed that law as well. We also changed the whole concept of the totality of the circumstances, which demands that it's not just the immediate situation, but what happened before that took place. And did the officer participate in, in escalating the problem rather than de-escalating the problem, which we seen happen many, many times before. And so it gives the district attorney and those in, in authority really some power now to address some issues that they claim they couldn't address because of the current law. Well, and the other thing about this is in folks that have tracked this bill from subcommittee through its signing this week, I mean, it, you get the California State Sheriff's Association on board, California Highway Patrol, the Police Officers Research Association of California also backed, backed this bill or ended up supporting it. But they didn't yet, back it, nor did they, so they I'm sorry, they, they did not it back neutral. it, but, 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 they, but they, they ultimately ended up putting out a statement in support right. um, of, of this bill. They joined it with SB 230, uh, which they, 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 they still want, want, want passed. But, but you brought a lot of folks that originally were on the other side of the aisle no in question. on this. No question. This bill got out of the assembly with 85% of the vote. It got out of the Senate with 85%. And we were praying to get... 51 percent. I mean, we were praying to get 41 people to vote for this bill, and we got 68 people to vote for it. So what happened was it was really almost a tidal wave of circumstances, as well as continued advocacy on the part of community members. We had the leadership engaged because people began to realize something has to happen. And our members decided that they didn't agree to vote for it initially, but they forced uh, uh, law enforcement to constantly talk to me because they, they can they normally get away with not just talking to people people and just say we're opposed to it and that puts a fear and a damp over the Capitol. But the wave of support from the public was um, enormous, as well as, interestingly enough, the wave of support from the newspapers across the state. Almost every newspaper, major p newspaper in California, supported this bill, thought it was reasonable, thought it was time to change the laws, that they, had, they saw what was happening and for once people said we need a change in law enforcement. We had a lot of law enforcement folks, too, quietly supporting the bill because they were trying to do some of the things we talked about that are best practices. It's not a weird bill. It's a best practice bill. And so what happened was we had law enforcement people, and now they speak out in Orange counties and others, but saying we've been trying to do this, but they didn't have kind of the force behind them. They didn't have the resources. Now they can at least blame me for it and say, you know, hey, we have to do it because, you know, California law, surely wherever has put this out there, we got to make change. But many of them had already started to try to do some change in their own training of officers and making sure that they were looking at the situation differently and using different strategies to accomplish it.
One of the things that I, I know that, I mean, your bill is independent of SB 230. Yes. But there have been groups, uh, law enforcement groups, that have, have, have pushed SB 230 in concert with AB 392. I'm, I'm curious, SB 230, you know, talk about the need for, for, for this training. Is this something that, 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 that you see as, 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 as valuable going forward along with? Well, first of all, SB 230 has dramatically changed from what it started to be. It was a bill that was going to try to kill our bill. That was number one. And fortunately, in the Senate, uh, the chair of public safety recognized that and, and changed the bill dramatically. Changed. But we recognize the need for uh, training anyway, because I, I think I may have mentioned in the other show that when we, we first did the first bill, I'm chair of public safety's budget. And what I did was I realized this, you know, this is a culture change. And it's not going to happen by me creating a law. So what happened was the very, when I introduced the other bill, I put, I increased the budget of training for officers by 50%. They get, they were getting $50 million. We gave them 75 million last year to train officers in, in the issues of de-escalation and various other strategies. Then we turned around this year, not only did they have the 25, but we increased that by 17 million more. So they now have a budget that's probably 75% greater than what they had before. So that's what we've done. We, we recognize training in our own bill. Gotcha. Well, mm -hmm. Dr. Weber, it's always great to have you on the program. Good Thanks to be here. Us. Good to be here. Thank you. Coming up after the break, San Diego voters, donations, what can they tell us about the 2020 presidential candidates and how they're doing in our area? Stick around.